Hello, 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 YouTube. Good morning to you. Happy November. Oh my God. Can you believe it's already November? Ah! I can't. Time is a flying. Time is flying by. Certainly not creeping by. Yes. Happy Monday. Uh, welcome to this uh, live English lesson. Um, who is here? Let's see. Tefo is here. Hello, Tefo. Mie. Tammy, Tammy. Marcella. Fab, the fabulous. Now go. Da, 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 da. Welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Eri. Um, thanks for coming today. Wow. Very exciting here. I woke up this morning and it was not dark. Yay! That's the, um, that's the advantage of winter time. I wonder if this is called standard time. I guess it's Eastern standard time. Um, there in Slovakia, nice sunny day here too. The, te the temperature this morning was, uh, 19 degrees. It's probably warmer than, than that today. Unbelievable. Um, today's high temperature is going to be 24 uh, Celsius, 75 Fahrenheit. I can't believe it. Wow. And then, um, we have two more days of, of warm weather and then it's going to start getting colder. That's according to the weather forecast in my, in my handy phone, handy, handy, uh, cell phone. Yes. So next Monday, it's going to be 34. Um, and 34, 34 is two or one. So hello, Peter. Welcome. Thanks for coming. I appreciate that. I have a new microphone stand. Yay. And, uh, it gets the, it keeps the microphone off my desk. One less wire. <laughs> Trying to stay organized. Rainy and cloudy and chilly in Amsterdam. 12 degrees Celsius. That is chilly. Especially when it's raining. Anyway, hope everybody had a good weekend. Uh, did you study anything this weekend in English? Did you learn anything new? Were you, did you read any books? I'd love to know what you're reading in English. Are you reading anything in English? How about you? How about you? How about you? How about you? What are you reading in English these days? I have one chapter left in my book um, in Japanese. One chapter left in the night it's called the Nighttime Cafe, Yoru Cafe. I'm very excited. This is my second book with chapter, my second chapter book that I've read in my second language. And I got to tell you, reading is a, is a, if you, if you're not reading, I never, I, I was never into reading novels. Um, but I found one that's at my level, relatively interesting story. And, um, I can understand it. I don't understand everything, but I can read it without using a dictionary and understand each chapter, each page. It's awesome. Um, sometimes I watch Japanese videos. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know. My, my, my language goals are centered around reading in order to build vocabulary. That's my goal. And so I do a lot of reading and some writing, not as much as I, as I, as I'd like to, um, because the Japanese language has characters that are not in the alphabet. And so I need to, I, I need to learn those characters. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Um, so watching videos for me is not exactly um, helpful, but it, it doesn't mean that, 
you know, it's it's not helpful. So um, you know, and 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 that's what Japanese looks like if you're not a, a Japanese um, speaker or learner. And so you have to you have to learn the characters. Um, so that's that. Not reading, but I've learned this. She's an A-list, B-list celebrity, right? Right. A-list, an A-list celebrity. Mm, who? Leonardo DiCaprio, a B-list celebrity. I don't know who's a B-list. Michael. <laughs> um, hi, Jessica. Hi, Monica. Um, hello. I can't read from the far east of Russia. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I, I think many years ago, many hundred years ago, um, the Japanese language borrowed the written Chinese language and modified a lot of those characters. So it's not the same as Chinese characters. Sebastiano. Hello from Italy. The Italians are in the house. Um, Tefo, idioms and phrasal verbs, a blast from the past. Don't make a mountain out of a mohill. You're off, you are off limits, I think. Veg out. Meritiza. Hello. Welcome, the Dominican Republic. I'll bet it's a nice day in the Dominican Republic today. <laughs> it's always a nice day there. The Dominican Republic is a as a popular place um, for American tourists. How much of the percentage of another language should we understand and say to speak, I speak a second language? <sighs> did, you see the, did you see that question that, that Fab um, asked us? How much is the percentage of another language uh, that we should understand and speak to say I speak a second language. So, to me, I speak a second language means I can communicate with people in that language. I don't say that there's a certain level of communication. Okay? But there has to be communication. There's a very, very popular, um, it used to be on a, on a CD or a DVD. Now it's a download. Um, and they say, you can speak any foreign language in 30 days, guaranteed. It's a guarantee that you can speak any foreign language in 30 days. And sometimes you see English teachers online saying, I will teach you how to speak English in 30 days or less. That doesn't mean you can communicate with people, right? But if you travel, pardon me, if you travel to New York and you walk up to somebody and you say, uh, pardon me, where is the subway? And they say, walk two blocks this way and turn right and you'll see it. If you understand that and you say, oh, thank you very much, and if you can find the subway, you speak English. Okay? So if you can communicate with somebody, that's, that's enough um, to say that you speak a second language. Right? My sister says sometimes, oh, I speak a little Italian. It means she knows a couple of Italian phrases. But I don't think she could have a conversation with somebody. I'm not picking on her, but I'm just saying that that's the difference. Okay? So if you can have a, a conversation, even a basic conversation. Hungry? Okay. Pizza? Sure. Let's go. If you can do that, then you, then you can say, I speak English. That's how I look at it. Um... Sebastiano, yes, my, my surname is Italian. That's right. My father's family, the De Giacomos, um, and also my grandmother was Grandma Maluzzo. Uh, they came from Sicily. 
um, in the early 1900s. And my mother's family, they came from Naples, or maybe you say Napoli. But that's a good example. I can't say that I speak Italian. I just know a few phrases that I can say, but I can't have a conversation. No mi scocciare. That's my favorite sentence in Italian. Um, what else? Meritza. Yes, we're having a nice day. Excellent. Peter says, improving vocabulary through reading only makes wrong pronunciation in my mind. I want to listen to some would-be known words. I can understand them. All right. Everybody's got a different style of learning. That's okay. That's okay. I've spent, for me, I've spent a long time, 25 years or so, speaking and communicating in Japanese, but I've never really spent a lot of time on paper. That's the difference. That's why, for me, I go, oh, I know the pronunciation. I know that word. Oh, that's what it looks like on paper. So everyone's at a different point, and that's okay. That means you can get by in your second language. Yes, that's what I think. Um, the beautiful view behind me, is it real? So, um, uh, no, it's virtual. It's virtual. So, uh, the photo of New York City through the windows, that's a photo of New York City. It's, all, it's, it's two photos together. So, the photo of New York City with the Empire State Building uh, here, right? I took this photo. This is, this is the view from a place called Rockefeller Center, the top of the rock. So I took that photo. And then I found this really, a really beautiful office. <coughs> Excuse me. And I removed everything that was in the windows, and I put this photo there. And I readjusted the back wall over there, and I put my sign. So it's a real photo of New York City. Yeah, it's a, it's a great view. Actually, it wasn't a very clear day that day, but it's a it's a great it's a great photo. Um, if I say I can get by or I'm smattering, that does it mean that I speak English or any other language as a second language? So, the meaning of a second language means not the main language that you were born speaking. So if you grew up speaking Dutch, that's your first language. Anything else that you speak is a second language. And so smattering is not a verb. Smattering is a noun. I know a smattering of French, you could say. Smattering means a small amount. Um, you better speak English. We have to learn from you all the secrets. <laughs> I'm trying to show you all the secrets. There's no secret. There's the secret, I love that too. A lot of a lot of English teachers um, on social media say, okay, we're going to learn the secrets of blah, 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 learning English. There's no secret. Every day you read something, you write something, you listen to something, and you speak something. Reading, writing, speaking, listening. Input, output. Input, output. That's the secret. I mean, it's no secret. That's what you got to do. That's what you have to do. Um, a little bit of reading every day, a little bit of writing, a little bit of listening, and a little bit of speaking. That's If you do that every day, even if you only talk to yourself, you open up the refrigerator and you say, oh, what am I going to have for breakfast? I think I'll have scrambled eggs. If you just say that in English, let's see, I need butter and I need eggs. And I'll make toast. If you, even if you just say that, you're not talking to somebody, at least the words come out of your mouth. Or what I do, you read with your voice. So you open your book. Um, you open your book and you read and you say, however, uh, uh, dad is going away and they are going to stay here. So there's nothing to worry about. Reading with your voice helps. Reading with your voice helps. 
I've been studying Japanese for a long time. No, I've been using Japanese for a long time. I started studying at the beginning of August. So it's been three months. And, and I'm working with a teacher every week. And I got to say that, first of all, having a teacher helps me keep going, even though I'm very busy, because I got to do it. Um, you know, you have a responsibility. Oh, I got to do my homework. You know, so I got to do it. Um, but it, it also made me realize that it's possible. Three months ago, I would look at Japanese writing and go, oh, I can't read that. I didn't believe I could do it, but now I believe I can do it. I don't know everything, believe me. I have a lot to learn. But my attitude has changed toward reading. So, yeah, it's helpful. I hope that's helpful. All right. Today, we're going to look at we're going to look at, today we're going to look at the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And that's what happens with learning a, a language, right? It's a journey of a thousand miles. Trapave. Welcome. I'm from Ecuador, but I live in Italy. Everybody lives in Italy here. Wow. Not everybody. Many people. Awesome. Um... Yeah, you know, as a teacher, when uh, somebody contacts me and says, oh, Michael, I want to take your private lesson, how long will it take before I can blah, 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 blah? Uh, I, I don't know, forever. That's the hardest question. I don't know. Do you, do you stay home all day and do nothing but study English? Or are you an adult like most people here and you have a job or a family or kids or dogs or parents to take care of? Um, you know, or do you, you run a business? Like, it depends. Like, everybody's different. And everybody, everybody has different goals too, right? So, for me, a second language, it, it's, it's kind of like... It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like this. I went to the doctor 10 years ago, right? And uh, for, a, for a health checkup, a, uh, my annual physical. And the doctor said, you know, you're, you're in good shape. He said, but you're, you're, you, you have, your, your cholesterol is high. And your cholesterol is high not because I eat junk food or because of what I eat is because my body produces cholesterol. So he said, I'm going to put you on um, a cholesterol medicine. And I said, okay. I said, how long do I have to take that? And he said, forever. Because that's going to keep your cholesterol in balance, you know, for the rest of your life. So it's just, it's just something you do now. That's what you do now. So every morning, I take that medicine. That's just, that's what I do, right? And so it's kind of like the same with learning language. Um, I've known many of you for quite a long time because, you know, we've, we have this relationship here on social media where you watch my lessons, you, you send me comments, you, you come to my, my live lessons here or on other social media. And so most of the people here, I don't know everybody because not everybody in the room is commenting, um, but most of you, I feel you're not here on a temporary basis, right? You're, you're, you, you took the first step to, to, to go on this journey of a thousand miles and you're going to be on this journey for a long time. And I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to be on the journey with you, right? So you're on this, you're on this language learning, this English learning hike. And, you know, we're, 
we're on this, you know, we're all together on this journey. And so um, uh, it's, it's a journey and it's, you know, it's not, learning a second language to me is not something that you master in two years or you master in five years or you master in 10 years. It's a continuous process. It's like playing a sport. You know, you play tennis, right? You, you keep playing tennis. If you like tennis, you're going to keep playing tennis and you're going to keep getting better at it or you play the guitar or play the piano. You're going to keep doing it. You're going to keep getting better at it. You never, I think I told you this story. Um, I'm a guitarist. I play the guitar. And when I went to, 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 to university to study music, I remember I was 18 or 19 years old. I asked my teacher, oh, how long do I have to study? How long do I have to learn the guitar? And my teacher, who was a very direct guy, he said, how long? Until you're dead. That's what he said. You know, you, it's, a, it's an ongoing process forever until you quit. You know, you either keep going or you quit. There's no, I've learned it, right? You can, you can learn how to cook linguine carbonara for my Italian friends, right? You can learn how to cook carbonara, right? Maybe you need one or two times. Maybe, maybe you need 10 times to cook that. And then you go, okay, I learned how to make that. I understand that. Um, one of the one of the uh, um, dishes that I like to make, Italian dishes, is called uh, salt and bocca, which I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. Salt and bocca. It's a veal shank, kind of like a veal shank in a stew. Um, I've made that, I don't know, 20, 30 times. I know how to do that. I've got it down. But... You know, learning language, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be practicing and studying and learning Japanese until I'm dead. Because I've decided I want to, I wanna, that's my second language. I'm going to work on it really hard. Um, it's a lifelong journey. That's right. That's what Tammy said. Margo, hi. Welcome. Um, so, yeah. So, it's an, ongoing, it's an ongoing journey. It never ends um, until you decide that you're done. And then you go, okay, you know what? I'm not going to study English anymore. I'm going to study French. And then you stop. But it's, I think it's impossible to not learn or not, to, it's impossible to not continue to learn another language, right? Even if you're very fluent and you, you have a great vocabulary, I think, you, I think you're always going to learn something. Oh, I didn't know that word or I didn't know that idiom or something. Um. Uh, the question with the time for learning a language better is a naive question. I agree, uh, Sebastiano. Right. It's a it's a it's an endless journey. That's right, an endless journey. The earlier you start, the better. My six year old niece speaks four languages, never any textbooks. Right, right. That's the that's the beauty of kids. That's the beauty of kids. I saw several years ago um, a. Uh, a family came from Japan to New York City uh, because the dad's company sent him here. And this girl, she was uh, five years old and she zero. Um, uh, zero English. Zero. Nothing. And she went to kindergarten in America. And after the first school year of kindergarten, she, she could have basic conversation. And then by the next half of, of her being in the first grade, she was fluent. And her pronunciation was just like a New Yorker. There's a man over there. He's a nice man. She was amazing. And that's it because kids, um, kids have that, you know, you did too, right? Think about it. When you were a baby... Right? From baby to three, in, in three years, you were fluent in your native language. No textbook, no teacher, no Michael on YouTube. So, yeah, kids are amazing. 
Um, oh, you can you can you can pause and and rewind the live video. This is live. Okay, right now it's eight fifty six a.m. in New York. Now I don't know where where what time it is in Eastern Russia, um, but uh, maybe it's. 4 p.m., 5 p.m. in Eastern Russia. But yeah, you can, you can, YouTube lets you pause and, and go back in the live lesson. All right, so let's, let's go ahead. I hope that was helpful information for you. Um, I hope. So today, uh, today we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about eight ways to use while. That's an interesting word in, in English. Um, before we do that, I would like to mention the advice that I just gave you about um, studying English. I have all together in my uh, free vocabulary workshop, okay? And in this workshop, uh, you will learn where and how to get new words, the best way to study those, and how to own your vocabulary forever. All you have to do is go to myhappyenglish.com and you can sign up. It's free. All right. And also, uh, we're going to look at this document here today. So if you'd like to download this document, then you can do that also for free uh, by going to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. All right. And that's, that's where you're going to go for that. All right. So let's get started. Um, there we go. Pasta a la carbonara is hard to make. I know that. That's very hard to make. Very, very hard to make. Um, that one I keep practicing. The salt and boca, I'm okay. But the, the carbonara, that's, that's tough. All right. So, some of this might you might know. You might go, Michael, this is so easy. And some of this might be new. We'll see how it goes. All right. As a conjunction, right? Because while is a conjunction. While means during that time. Okay? And about the grammar, it's while plus a gerund, you know, the ing, or while plus a subject and a verb. So, here are some examples. I don't watch TV while eating dinner. Or I could say, I don't watch TV while I am eating dinner. We use both grammar patterns. Okay. Um, in the office, we're not supposed to check our social media while working. I could also say, Lizzie likes to play the piano. Huh? Lizzie likes to listen to piano music while she is studying. Michael likes to put his eyes on the paper while reading. <laughs> um, how about you? How about your example with while, this meaning of while? Tammy says, I listen to your podcasts while working in the kitchen. Thanks. New podcast lesson coming today. Um, by the way, if you are a member of my podcast learners study group, we have live Zoom coaching. Live group coaching on Zoom this week. Just a reminder there. All right. Uh, give me a second because uh, Max wants to go downstairs. He just woke up. Just one second. All right, buddy. Go ahead. Go see him over. Good morning, Rose. All right. My coworkers woke up. <laughs> um... Thank you. It's 23.59. Is that the time? Wow. 23.59. You're really in Eastern Russia. Wow. Like, uh, where are you? In Habarovsk? 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 Or maybe you're in Omyakon. 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 I always keep this in my phone. This is a, this is a city. Omyakon is a city in eastern Russia, 
where um, it's the coldest city in the world that people live. Maybe that's where you live. Um, I typically listen to your podcast while I commute. Thank you. I join your online class while having coffee at Starbucks. Nice. Always listen to VOA while I'm dri- while I'm driving. Good. I take some notes while listening to your podcast. Good. Take notes. I often listen to your podcast while preparing for work and eating breakfast. Nice. I'm checking my emails while getting back to my friends. Good. I do not browse on the internet while I'm eating. I try I try to not browse the internet while I'm eating. That works better. I try to not browse the internet while I am eating. I always watch social media while getting on trains. Good examples. Those are really good examples. See, we learn from each other. All right, good. So, that's one. Next. We can use while as a noun. And while means a period of time. Okay? While means a period of time. And we have phrases like for a while, for for a little while, a while ago. Um, for example, here's some examples. I have had this winter jacket for a while. It may be time to get a new one. Okay, so in this case, I have had this winter jacket for a while. It may be time to get a new one. A while means a long period of time. Or, um, I will be in the office for a little while on Saturday. That means a short amount of time. Uh, Boston is a nice city. I went there a while ago, but I'd like to visit. I like to. I would like to visit there again. Oh my God. Always a typing mistake, Michael. Oh my gosh. Why, Michael? Why? Uh, I got to fix that. But I... Let me just fix that in the main document there before I post this with mistakes. That's why I don't post this document before the lesson. Um, I'm watching for traffic while riding on my bike downhill. Ooh, that sounds dangerous. Um... Have you done something for a while? Have you lived in your your current apartment for a while? Have you had have you have you listened to my podcast for a while? I used to think that for a while I'm at a short period of time. Um it depends on the context. It depends it depends on the context. I've known him for a while. That could be a long period of time. Um, it always depends on the context. I don't read a book while I have, while, while I have breakfast. I don't read a book while having breakfast or I don't read a book while I have breakfast. So it's got to be while followed by a gerund or while followed by a, um, subject and verb. All right. After this lesson, I'm going to daydream for a while. I have not been to the States for a while. For a while. For a while. Um, I'm going to study for a while. Right? You can say to your friend, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch TV for a while and then I'm going to go to bed. That's a short period of time. It all depends on the context. I have been listening to your podcast for a while, but I listened to it for a little while while I'm heading to work. I just listened to one a while ago before I watched this video. Nice, nice, nice examples, Mie. Thank you. Last time I went to the States was three years ago. Um, I've been studying English for a while. I've been studying Japanese for a long while. <gasps> uh, there is nothing interesting than learning English for quite a while. <laughs> 
Maybe you could say, Peter, there's nothing more interesting. There is nothing more interesting than, because you're comparing, there is nothing more interesting than learning English for quite a while. Max, don't make noise, buddy. Okay? My coworkers just woke up. They're having a hard time uh, getting used to the fact that we changed the clocks. Because for Max, it's 10 a.m. But in fact, oh, sorry. But in, te- in, in, in fact, it's only 9 a.m. All right, I'm going to listen to music for a while and then hit the hay. Nice example. All right, I'm going to move ahead just because um, we have uh, a limited amount of time since I talked too much. Um, I saw my favorite teacher, Michael, while making pizza for dinner. You made pizza for dinner? Sebastiano, if you make pizza for dinner, you have to, uh, you have to invite me. <sighs> pizza is my drug. I don't take drugs, but pizza is my addiction. My God, I love pizza. Every Friday. Every Friday. Yes, indeed. There's, uh, there's American pizza. American pizza with some uh, pepperoni on it. Yum, yum, yum. Uh, I had a visit to my family a while ago, so I decided to come over someday soon. All right, nice. So that's using, that's using while as a noun. All right. I love this next phrase. I watched a movie for a while ago, and I watched a movie earlier. So you don't need four. I watched a movie a while ago. I watched a movie earlier. It's the same, yeah. I could say like this. Um, I spoke to Jack a while ago. I spoke to Jack earlier. Although I might, I feel like earlier is a shorter amount of time. I spoke to Jack a while ago. I spoke to Jack a little while. I watched a movie a a little while ago. I watched a movie earlier. I think earlier means a little while ago. That's a better way to think about it. Does that make sense? All right. By the way, as I mentioned before, in case you just joined us, you can get, you can download this document here. See, I'm pointing. This document here. This document, you can download this document I'm pointing virtually. Look, my finger went away. You can download that document. Just go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. And when you do that, you're gonna, you'll are gonna you put yourself on the mailing list for my weekly English lessons in your email box with uh, reading, writing, speaking, and listening practice. Free for you. All right, while you're at it, This is a great way to request something, okay? Um, While you're at it means while you're doing that thing, and we usually use it this way to make a request. Oh, are you going to the post office? While you're at it, can you pick up some stamps for me? Are you going to the post office? Hey, while you're at it, can you pick up some stamps for me? Said the man from the 20th century. Uh, does anybody use stamps anymore? If you're going to clean the bathtub, you might as well clean the sink while you're at it. Oh, you're taking your shirts to the cleaners? Can you drop off my jacket while you're at it? Okay, so while you're doing that thing, can you do this thing too? We usually use this um, to make a request. You are going to the grocery store today, right? Can you buy some apples while you're at it? Apple season. I bought a jug of apple cider uh, yesterday at the at the grocery store. Mm-mm. Nothing like ap- fresh apple cider in the in the fall. I look forward to that. They do sell apple cider all year round, but it's always fresher and better tasting in the fall. Um. If you're going to practice English, you might as well read a book while you're at it. 
If you're going to read a book in English, you might as well read out loud with your voice while you're at it. While you're at it. While you're at it. Who else has an example? While you're at it, can you blah, blah, blah? While you're at it. While you're at it, um, does it mean doing a favor? Yes, it's a way to ask somebody to do you a favor if they're doing another thing, right? Oh, you're going to the grocery store? Can you pick up a container of milk for me while you're at it? Okay. Can you do me a favor and pick me up a, a container of milk? In that case, yes, it's the same. While you're at it, you can get out of my house because you caused some damage to my heart, you little, oh my God. Monica, are you okay? Oh my goodness. Um, while you're there, yes, while you're there. Yeah. Oh, are you going to Jack's office? Uh, while you're there, tell him I said hi. That works. You're doing laundry? Can you wash my pants, please, while you're at it? Right. Um, uh, Marcella, laundry doesn't need a, uh, because it's not countable. That's why. Um, I'm watching your class while I'm working. Uh-oh, don't tell the boss. <laughs> while you're at it. All right. Let's go to the next one. I'm going a little faster today because I spent a half hour just talking about how to study English. When you walk Max, could you visit our pizza dealer while you're at it? <laughs> I don't know how Max would react if I, if I did that. Uh, watching good old movies is fun. You can learn new English words while you're at it. Good. Uh, yes, teacher, I invite you to eat a pizza here in Sicily while we converse in English. Excellent. Excellent. Um, it's a joke, Michael. It just crossed my mind. Okay. Oof. Thank goodness. Uh, while I'm waiting for my son, I'm watching Michael's lesson for a while. Excellent. Good examples. All right. Hello, Max. Hello, buddy. You want to come and say hello? Come here. No? Okay. Goodbye. Um, once in a while means sometimes. Okay. It's a good way to... An alternate, if you always say sometimes, 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 you can say once in a while. I enjoy going to the beach once in a while. You know, you should call grandma once in a while. She often asks about you. I go to that restaurant once in a while for dinner. It's pretty good. Once in a while. Hello, Max. Once in a while, Max likes to come and say hello to the audience. Right, Max? You want to come here, buddy? You want to come here? Come here, Max. No? Rosie. Rosie, go downstairs. All right. Sorry, I thought the dogs wanted to say hi to you. I eat Japanese food once in a while. Once in a while, sometimes. What do you do once in a while? How about you? What do you do once in a while? I can go on a car trip once in a while. I'm not a big fan of pizza. I eat it just once in a while. Right, just once in a while. Once in a while, you remember to do your homework yourself. That's right. Your mom called the co-workers. Your mom called the co-workers. I watch your YouTube videos once in a while. Maiko, thank you. Welcome. Once in a while. Once in a while means sometimes. This is a great phrase. Very convenient, very commonly used. Now, yeah. I drink a beer while having dinner once in a while. Are you going to grab a bite? Can you, can you buy one for me while you're at it? We have to study English every day, once, not once in a while. I'll say that again, Mie. We have to study English every day, not once in a while. Not only once in a while. Correct. Once in a while, I write some notes in a notebook. I heard her. <laughs> uh, no, that was my sister. 
calling the coworkers. My my sister works remotely here, um, a couple of days a week. So that was that was her calling the coworkers. Wow, this microphone is very sensitive. Once in a while is a war. It, it's warm and then it's cold out. Right. Once in a while it's warm. I think. These days I travel once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon means hardly ever. I enjoy going to the movie theater once in a while. Ooh, haven't been to the movie theater in a long time. All right, let's move ahead in the interest of finishing this. All the while. All the while. A little bit more of a formal sounding phrase. All the while means the whole time or during that time. I go to bargain sale. I go to a bargain sale once in a while. Um, I only eat out with my friend once in a while. All right, good examples. Can you pass the salt to make the pizza while you're at it? While you're at it. All right, all the while. All the while means the whole time or during that time. All the while. All the while I was in Paris, I drank a lot of wine. Hmm, wine, with his New York accent. Jack was in the office yesterday, but all the while he was watching YouTube videos. Oh my goodness. I went to visit my grandma in the hospital yesterday, but all the while she was sleeping. The whole time she was sleeping. Okay, so all the while. It's a little bit more of a formal way of speaking. Um, but that works. I drank. I drank. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, typing mistake there. <clears throat> Boo. Drank. I will fix that in the mix. Thanks, Mie. You got a sharp eye. I drank a lot of wine. Somebody on Instagram, uh, <coughs> excuse me, somebody on Instagram the other day yelled at me for, for a spelling mistake. You're an English teacher. You shouldn't make spelling mistakes. I'm still a human being. <laughs> you know? Um, I have assumed Joan is your brother all the while, right? I play tennis with my husband once in a while. Margo, thanks. An entire day. It, it, could, it could mean an entire day if you were there for one day. All the while on my last vacation, I was swimming in the sea. Ah, sounds nice. All the while. All right, we have four more, and we have 11 minutes. Okay. All the time means always, right? Um, my dog sleeps all the time. Once you said you were bad at spelling when in school. It's true. It's true. Um... Hi, me. I stopped by here accidentally. I don't watch YouTube very often lately, but I saw you again. Ah, nice. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Um, all right, next. We also use while when we uh, show a contrast. Okay? And this is very formal sounding. Um, using while this way has the nuance or the meaning of even though or but. Okay? While he is a very intelligent man, the manager is not a very good leader. Okay? Even though he's a very intelligent man, the manager is not a very good leader. Okay? So we use while to mean even though. While it is not the fanciest restaurant in town, they certainly make very delicious pizza. Hmm. While I didn't study very hard for the exam, my grade was not that bad. So while, in this case, means even though. Even though. 
even though. Um, while my coworkers are very cute, they sometimes make noise during the lesson. And if you've just joined, when I talk about my coworkers, um, I'm talking about my dogs. I sometimes refer to my dogs as my coworkers. So it's okay if I say my coworkers are cute. It's my dogs. Uh, while. Okay, so again, this is very formal. Um, you'll see this if you take English exams like TOEFL or TOEIC or IELTS. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a comparison. It's a contrast. Actually, it's a, it's a contrast. While it's not the fanciest restaurant in town, they certainly make good pizza. While you use any spell checkers, you do less typos, but in fact, you forget words. That's correct. That's correct. And the spell checker doesn't tell you if you've used the wrong tense. While I don't do much homework, I still listen to your podcast often. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's while. That's while. Who else has an example? By the way, I will post this document, this document, when we're done. Okay? So if, um, if you'd like to download this, just go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. You can down this, download this document for free. All right, that's while. All right, let me move ahead just to make sure I cover everything today. I think one, two, two more. Okay. Feel free to drop your example in the box. Uh, while away. While away is a phrasal verb. Now while is a verb. But it's only used, I think, as a, in this phrasal verb uh, combination. While life is not that easy, I still enjoy it. That's for sure. I was having fun on the beach all the while. While away. You can while away your time. We use while away when we talk about spending time, especially leisure time or relaxing time. Paul likes to while away a Sunday afternoon watching football on TV. Who has that kind of time? Uh, my mom likes to while away her time, spend her time reading. When I was a teenager, I used to while away the summer days in the park near my house. True story. So, while away, to spend relaxing time. While I don't study English every day, I feel my English is improving, all thanks to your podcast. Hey, thanks, Stefo. Unwind, yes. While I make money hard, I don't have the luxury of saving money. I hear you. I like to while away. Mm. So while away, followed by some point of time. That's how we use that, Tammy. So you while away my time watching an old movie. Or I like to while away the evening watching an old movie. So you can't have a gerund. It's got to be... While away a Sunday afternoon, while away her time, while away the summer days. Okay, it's, some, it's something about time, not an, not an action. That's how we use that. Okay, does that make sense there, Tammy? I like to while away the weekends, staying at the gym. There you go. You guys are healthy. Don't while away your time slacking around. It's bad for you. Again, we can't have a gerund here. It's got to be some noun that reflects a time period or a time. I like to while... Don't while away your time slacking around. I like to while away my evening watch a good old movie. Perfect. That's good. That's good. I like to while away my time reading a book or hiking in the woods. Again, while away plus a time period or a, a time word. 
You can't have while away plus a, a, a gerund. You need some time. I like to while away my time reading a book. I like to while away the afternoon. I like to while away the evening reading a book or hiking in the woods. Woods. It's always woods, too. I like to while away the weekend eating a gourmet meal with my family. Nice. I go to the theater once in a while. I like to while away weekends going shopping. Good. Nice examples. All right, one more. (laughs) Sorry for rushing today, but I want to get all of these in. Um, I like to while away my time walking the dog. Good. Worthwhile. Something is worthwhile or worth your while. It means there's value in doing that. Okay? There's value in doing it. It's worth it. Okay? Or it's worthwhile, we say. I like to while away my weekend going for swimming and hanging out with my fellas. It's worth your while watching your videos on YouTube channel. Thanks. All right, something can be worthwhile. Arthur Avenue in the Bronx is the last great Little Italy neighborhood in New York. It's a little far, but it's totally worthwhile going there. That's for sure. It's worthwhile going there. Taking English from a qualified, experienced teacher is worth your while. That's true. It's worth your while. Um... It's a little difficult to get to that ski resort, but everyone says it's worth your while. So it's worth your while or it's worthwhile, same meaning. Those have the same meaning, okay? It's totally worthwhile. It's worthwhile spending time on your podcasts. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I I didn't realize I had so many podcast fans. I appreciate that. It's worthwhile It's worth your while. It's worth your while following your steps. Thank you. It's worth your while to do that. It's worth your while going there. And usually it's worthwhile ING. That's usually what we say. It's worthwhile ING. (sighs) It's a little far, but it's totally worthwhile going there. Elena, hi. Yeah, sorry. I changed the time because of of my life. (laughs) Welcome. Better late than never. Uh, Previously, we met an hour later. Now it's an hour earlier. Sorry about that. Um, All right. That my friends, brings us to the end of today's live English lesson. Oh, my goodness. Again, if you would like to download that document, all you need to do is go to myhappyenglish.com slash YouTube. You can download that for free. And while you're there, why don't you sign up for my free vocabulary workshop? You can learn where to get your new words, the best way to study them, and how to own your new vocabulary. All that for free for you to help you study English. Um, And that's it. That is all the time that we have for today's live live English. Huh? What? Live English lesson. Thank you so much for joining me today uh, for this live English lesson. I really, really, really appreciate that. Again, as we said earlier, um, this is a journey. It's an ongoing journey. And thank you for... um, letting me uh, walk along with you on your journey to learn English. So, again, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for studying English with me today. Remember, learning another language is not always easy, but it's not impossible either. And I'm here to help you on your journey. Thank you so much for learning English with me today. I hope that was helpful. Looking forward to seeing you in the next live lesson. Thanks.